Hello and good morning, everybody. Welcome back to another segment of, <coughs> excuse me, Live with Lise. My name is Lise Perez, and you're watching our segment on EMTV. Thank you so much for tuning in this morning. So our next guest, her name is Monique Shaw. She is a multi-award winning British trained interior designer, property staging mentor, and design influencer on house.com. She's been featured recently on TV shows such as The Homes and Lifestyles, as well as Style in the City. And she was also chosen as one of our 150 Canadians who stand out in 2017 via standout publications and is the featured designer in the No magazine and YYC. I'm super excited to introduce her because uh, she has an awesome story and some awesome expertise. So I look forward to chatting with her. So good morning, Monique. Thank you for uh, coming to EMTV. Good morning, Liz. Thank you for having me. You're know, welcome. So tell me, how did you get into the whole home staging business, interior design? Well, um, I was living in England at the time and I used to work in investment banking and IT and the big dot-com burst happened there. Mm -hmm. So I was laid off from my job in banking and I decided to go into business for myself and I wanted to choose something I was really passionate about. And um, interior design had been something I had always really been into. My mother was into, my grandmother was into and loved watching Will and Grace growing up and <laughs> yes, designing yeah. women. And so yeah. I thought, you know, I think it's about time I start doing something with this because it was always in the back of my mind. So went to college, uh, was a mature student, studied design. Wow. And um, yeah, that was in London back in the early 2000s. Best place for design. Yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and here I am now doing both interior design for private clients and doing home staging for realtors, mm -hmm. private homeowners and uh, home builders. That's awesome. And did you, so you uh, got out of the industry in banking? Like you, uh, were you laid off or? Yeah, so okay. I was laid off. The dot-com bubble just burst. There was mm. way too many people in IT at the time. And so, yeah, that was just an unfortunate side effect. So many people in IT lost their jobs. Yeah. Very similar to um, here with the oil and gas of lots of people losing exactly. their jobs. And I just had to retrain and, and learn something new. And I've made a real good go of it. And have you been able to um, use your banking uh, knowledge and in, from that industry into your current profession? Yeah. I think it made me very disciplined and um, having worked in IT, I, I still like that I can use those skills <laughs> yeah. because being a small entrepreneur, you have to learn how to do all the social media, all of your IT, you know, um, setting up websites, logos, all of that. You have to do so much of it for yourself because in the beginning you just don't have the funds. Yes, exactly. And technology is so, it's increasing so much so that you kind of have to learn it for yourself sometimes. Yeah, I think I'm a bit of a big techno buff. Right. <laughs> I like having all the new toys and gadgets and I've been purchasing so much from my own business, yeah. just camera equipment and video and, you know, microphones and all the rest of it. Just getting more and more into it as, you know, it it helps me grow my business. Mm -hmm. Ah, yes, you were actually telling me before the segment that you're uh, looking into vlogging as well. Tell me about that. Yeah, so I've done a, I've done a little bit of vlogging. Um, I did one vlog post for Bell Mental Health Day, just cool. enc okay. encouraging people to um, look after themselves. And when you come home from work at the end of the day, it's time to just shed the, the work feel. And, and when you come in, you should just Go upstairs, get changed, wash your face, take mm -hmm. off the makeup, put on things that feel nice, co mm. comfy, cozy, comfortable, and um, just take a few minutes just to sit and maybe do a small meditation or, you know, at the end of the day, have that relaxing bath, you know, eat something that's really nourishing and, and don't just, you know, eat for the sake of eating. That's like, right concentrate and be present and you know just letting the stress of the day leave because so many of us come home and we don't switch off that's true we just we always have the phone till we go to bed and you know we're wearing the same clothes we came home in and you know we don't get into bed or or, or arrange our bed right until we are getting into it so coming home getting changed wash your face yeah. pull your sheets back and have it ready to jump into later yeah 
And that's interesting because it's all about self-care, right? So that's interesting that you said about the, uh, you know, going home and just, you know, wearing the same clothes and whatnot because you're still in the working mode or whatever you've been doing. So you don't actually have that opportunity to, to kind of take care of yourself and to kind of move on from the day because you're still in that you're still in that ambiance and i'm i'm notorious for that i never I barely <laughs> ever do it so do you find that it makes a difference for yourself for me it does and i never used to do that i would come home and i'd still have my work clothes on mm. and i would still be feeling like i was wearing this yeah. dress like a cloak mm. so now like the first thing i do it's like i'm upstairs and makeup comes off and the pretty clothes you know get put away <laughs> or laundry whatever and it's like my hair is up and um you know i'm just wearing my lululemons or whatever <laughs> yeah. i'll i'll change right down to my socks because i'm in so many different homes all the time that's right exactly. i just want to feel like you know I, i'm in my bare feet or i'm wearing soft socks that are not been in 50 houses that day that's let's right say, you know <laughs> So it just feels like I, I, I leave the external persona behind. When I come to my home, I am just I like that. me. I'm a Nick and that's it. I'm there for my, my husband, my children, my family. And I leave as much as I can behind. Because as you know, running a business, it's so easy to it is. let it run you 24 hours a day. And we shouldn't do that. Well, and a lot of people have mentioned that people could say that they're business owners, but what they've, what, what a lot of people do is create jobs for themselves because it's, you know, it's running them, and they're just on a continuous, I guess, momentum with it that they just can't stop because it's just it's a continuous thing, and they don't actually have time for their own self care or even their family. Exactly, and I learned that too. Um, I, I read a lot of marketing books early on as an entrepreneur, and one thing I learned is you have to separate yourself. Mm. If you're gonna just be like the boss and the worker bee and and the office manager and the social media guy, like of course we have to be all those things. But if you don't learn how to separate yourself and sometimes delegate, if you can, where and when you can. You know, it's just, it's a downward spiral. You're never out of that sphere of business in your mind 24-7. Mm -hmm. And that's not how life should be. And as women, we wear so many hats. So it's... That's true. <laughs> so that is true. Because <laughs> yeah. uh, like some of the guests that we found on the show, they're single mothers and they're business owners. And so, I'd, uh, you know, I always like to ask them, like, how can they balance things? So I like, and it's funny because not one of them has talked about self-care. So I like that huge. you uh, talk about yeah. that. Yeah. Because we kind of, in all fairness, we tend to neglect ourselves because we wear so many hats, even as an entrepreneur, right? But like moms, um, you know, wives, business owners, and as you've said, the social media person, the tech yeah. person. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're everybody. <laughs> exactly. So how do you find a balance? Because you, so you've done a couple of shows. So how do you find a balance besides self-care? Well, I, I'm trying to just make a strong definition. Like I said, when I come in the house, you know, I get changed and then work manic is done for the day. And it's right. My kids are there and, you know, it's time to have dinner. So I switch off and, and I have to think, OK, Pinterest, what am I going to cook tonight? <laughs> and then and then I'm in that mode and, and I'm focusing on, OK, right now I'm cooking for my family. And then it's homework you know with the kids and sitting down okay now I'm the the parent because my husband travels a lot so I, I have to do a lot in one day on top of my own business yeah. but it's just defining little moments right now I'm I'm the chef <laughs> right now I'm <laughs> I'm the tutor yeah. you know and when the kids go to bed then it's it's me time it's me and and you um you had mentioned do you put your phone away then oh I wish I could I say know. I could <laughs> And I try, I yeah. do, I do try and it's inevitably yeah. something will go wrong if I do, but That's I try right. to check it a lot less or at least okay. leave it in another room <laughs> instead of right beside me at all times. Which so I'm a little for. light flashing, <laughs> flashing on, it's what's that? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And it's, it's, I like that you say that because you were just telling me like after the show, you're actually heading to Bath just to kind of get away and things. So it's nice to be able to do that because you had mentioned you don't, you haven't done that in a while, right? So, exactly. and how many kids do you have? So my husband and I have four children between okay. us, all teenagers. All oh, wow. <laughs> Got your hands full. Yes. <laughs> It's not so bad. <laughs> Girl, boys? Just, uh, two girls, two boys. Mm. Yeah. 
they're interested or getting into relationships and things like girls. Yes. I want a boyfriend. Oh. <laughs> yes. That's starting to happen and um, kind of got to learn with them because we have experience, you know, and we're grown adults. They don't necessarily want to hear about our oh, own experiences. Their friends are the most important. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but yeah, just trying to still be a mentor and um, not just be like the buddy. That's right. But finding that delicate balance of I care about you, I love you, but I'm also your parent. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you get a little bit of both. And do you find like even as a as a business owner, because it might be easier for someone that has a nine to five, um, kind of creating that balance with their kids and whatnot and um, uh, attention with their kids. So do you find as a business owner it's harder or do you, are you able to be more flexible with that? Um, well, I had a lot of support initially when they were younger. Perfect. I had a babysitter that lived next door. So if I did have to work the odd evening, because some of my clients can't be seen during the day, I had my babysitter supporting me, who was also training to be a chef. So my kids were Wonderful. <laughs> very well fed while I was gone. But as they've gotten older, I've been um, teaching them more and more okay. cooking skills for themselves, getting cookbooks that are age appropriate. Or like my daughter's vegetarian and mm. so she eats just vegetarian my son is not so it's trying to teach them to be self-sufficient and cook the things that are oh. good for them but that are appropriate to their you know way of eating as well is she so, the only one that's a vegetarian in the family um yeah i i kind of oh. i have a foot in both camps at <laughs> home i'm more vegetarian if i go out i tend to eat more meat when she's not there <laughs> but um no, she's very respectful oh, and Excellent. and we're respectful of her as well. It's all about personal choice and as long as it's Absolutely. healthy, like most things in life, as long as it's done healthily, you just have to roll with it. Yeah, we tried being vegetarians. Not for very long. <laughs> no. <laughs> as you said, every every once in a while. <laughs> yeah. So tell me, you are a design influencer at has.com. So yes. tell me about that. That sounds interesting. <laughs> Well, I am on house.com and um, I post a lot of different idea books, as they call it, which is a lot of it my own work that I've done in staging homes or design. And um, I also create different sort of other kinds of idea books that are things that I've amalgamated on house that I like or, you know, that catch my eye, mm. different types of themes, you know, colors and trends and so on and so forth. And um, House awarded me with a House Influencer wow. badge um, a good few years ago now. And yeah, that's how that came about. Is that how you got into the kind of, is, is it, it's a website, right? So is that how you got into the blogging uh, stratosphere? <laughs> well, with the blogging, that was more just to do with my own website. Okay. You know, I, I used to be a writer. Um, when I was in the UK, I ran my own business creating products and inventions for mothers and babies. My oh. son was very colicky as a, as a baby, would scream for hours, and I had no way of soothing him. So I created um, little products just for him, but decided to create that for other moms and babies. And that grew into writing for parenting magazines, and that wow. grew into blogging for my company that I have now. So I enjoy writing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm a and I'm a passionate writer myself, so I like to kind of hear those type of things. Yeah. So speaking of trends, what do you think is the trend in uh, the interior design world right now for 2019? Okay, I get really happy about this because it's <laughs> a lot of it's like wallpaper, and I love wallpaper, wallpaper, dark walls, um, lots of geometric patterns, mixed metals, uh, abstract paintings mm -hmm. in in mixed metal colors and things like that, and I think that wallpaper is vastly underused here in Canada. In the prairies, we tend to play it safe. We're yeah, always playing yeah, it safe with colors. Yeah, No one wants to it's use It's all neutral. <laughs> it's all neutral, yeah. So when I you know, saw that wallpaper was making a big comeback, my husband, who's a wonderful, <laughs> wonderful man for putting up with my ideas and passions, he's put up a fair bit of wallpaper in our house in the last year and a half. But I just think it's it's like art for your walls. I agree. Yeah. It is art, and and it enlivens the home. If you just have mm -hmm. a basic painted wall, or you could have a wall with a pattern, that when you look at it makes you feel nice. You know, again, it's it's bringing that soothing kind of element to the home. Whatever makes you feel good in your own home, exactly. Like celebrate it. And so, how long have you been in business or in the industry? 
in the industry. I've been doing this probably 10 years nearly with design and then incorporating yeah. the staging as well. So, And so if you can remember back even in the past years, so the trend right now, how is it differentiated from past years? Well, we were in extremely hot markets up until about three, three and a bit years ago. And um, that was just like gangbusters. You could sell a house within 10 hours. And, and yeah. I did that quite successfully with staging. You know, I, I would prep a home and it would go on the market the next day and it was sold by sundown. And while that still does happen occasionally, it, it's not the norm anymore. That's right. So, you know, your, your staging and, and your stager has to be the right kind of individual. Okay. There's a lot of different kinds of stagers out there and we're not a regulated industry. So doing your research and making sure that you're hiring somebody that's qualified, mm -hmm. um, but has insurance, um, a business license with the city of Calgary, all those are kinds of things that you should be looking for. Mm -hmm. And the best stager out there is um, definitely one that has interior, interior design training so that they are putting the right looks and touches into your home so it looks current at all times. Yes, absolutely. And not just, um, like what we call the hobby stagers where it's just their taste. You got to make sure that your stager is properly trained and that's why interior designers make the best stagers. Hmm. And uh, what type of a stager do you think you are? What type of stager do I think <laughs> I am? Well, I, I think I take all those boxes. Mm -hmm. Like for me, I take business very seriously. <clears throat> so I want to have a very legitimate business. So for me, the first thing that I did in starting out in this business was I got my business license. Then I got my insurance, mm. but I made sure that I went to a reputable training company. I went to certified staging professionals oh, who I'm now a mentor with, and Wonderful. I'm also their ambassador for Canada. And um, I have a, a beautiful lady I work with at the moment who I'm mentoring now to get up and running with her own business in this tough, tough economy. And um, yeah, that you got to just make sure that you're legit and have something to offer if all you say is, well, you know, I know how to dress a room. That's right. It doesn't necessarily mean you know how to dress a room properly and you have the business acumen to deliver that product in yeah. a quality way. Well, and it's it's interesting that you actually say that because even, uh, and not even just in the staging industry, but in just uh, various industries, I've heard people say, you know, um, so I gave advice to a friend and now I'm a coach. <laughs> yeah. You know, and but if they have this required training, they may not necessarily the required training, but yet now they give advice and now they're a coach. And I've actually seen that with stages as well. It's like, well, I stage my own home, so now I'm uh, now they start, you know, having their business in it or just having um, just starting to stage other people's homes because now they're a stager. <laughs> yeah, and that's that's fine. <clears throat> like if that's your passion, you want to do that. I think that's great. However. It is business. We're conducting business. Therefore, as business individuals, we need to have that background to mm -hmm. us. If you don't know how to run a business, but you just know how to arrange the cushions or make the That's bed, right. it, it's, it's going to look very every day. And my motto is I take the ordinary and I turn it into the extraordinary. I take it from the everyday into something that's you know, just fantastic. Yeah. And I try to make it have that show home look and feel. So in order to do that, you know, you need to pay attention. What's going on in real estate? Are you watching the trends? What are the trends in interior design? Are you putting a look in that looked mm. good five years ago? Yeah. Or are you recommending paint colors that were trendy five years ago, but maybe not so much now? That's right. So it's all preparation, preparation. Lots, lots, <laughs> lots, lots of research. Lots of preparation. <laughs> so when you're um, designing or staging your home, is there, because usually there's like a let's say a, a Monique touch. Is there something that you always divert to like in colors or anything like that besides wallpaper? <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't do wallpaper with the, staging, yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, it's It's got to be a sort of, you know, a, a quick day or two of, of prepping okay. and we can't put the wallpaper as much as we'd like to sometimes. But um, my touch is that I'm very monochromatic. Oh. So I do lots of silvers. I like that. Of, champagnes, creams, charcoals. Um, sometimes I'll add a little bit of color. So if gold is trending, I, I have a gold look that I will incorporate. Okay. Or I will do one that's maybe more soft blues because there are a lot of people that like that soft, gentle blue. But I don't take risks with my client staging. And that's usually one of the biggest things I say as a mentor is never take risks with your client staging dollars. 
especially not in this economy. Mm -hmm. And one other thing I would say is very important to bear in mind, um, especially for people who are realtors that want to incorporate stagers into their um, their homeowners listings is be careful what what you ask for, because sometimes it's it's easy and it's not done out of malice or anything. It's easy to just want that complete look. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, the sky is there is a limit, especially in this economy. So. You know, sometimes clients will come to me and say, oh, I want all of this done. And I'm like, but you don't need all that. Mm -hmm. I'm only going to, you know, have you put your money where it's most important, where it focuses and shows the best. You know, I don't waste money on rooms that don't necessarily need That's staging right. because I don't want mm -hmm. them to overspend. I want them to only yeah. spend what they need. And, you know, and that's uh, and I like to ask that question as well, because um, in when even chatting with the realtors as guests, because as them same question, you know, what, for example, first time home buyers, they could be approved for, say, 500,000, and they'll kind of just use all of that. But it's like, they always give advice as always kind of do it under budget. Yeah. Because is it is it that the same way for uh, designing for designing? Yeah. So sometimes, you know, we'll have a more um, inexperienced realtor or that's new to the industry. And they're like, yeah, I want the whole house done. Mm -hmm. I'm like, well, here's how we should really do it. Focus on the master bedroom because smaller bedrooms aren't going to swing a sale. If they don't like what they see in the master bedroom, oh, right. okay. a child sized bedroom isn't suddenly going to make them buy the house. Interesting. And sometimes they'll say, well, I want it all done right down to the basement. Well, unless it's a very big luxury spring bank or bear's paw property, the average family home, you don't necessarily need to do the basement. Yeah. You put the wow on the main floor because again, <laughs> If they're not convinced by the main floor, suddenly going downstairs to the basement isn't going to suddenly no. swing the deal. So therefore, you focus the money where you know you have to impress the most. And you're barely never going to be in the basement. True. So it's living rooms, mm -hmm. it's bedrooms, and it's kitchens. And now even it's bathrooms. Bathrooms are really, you know, getting quite sumptuous oh, and, really? and glamorous, especially <laughs> yeah. with the home builders I work with. They are very, very glamorous. So... You hit up yeah. those rooms, not the smaller children's bedrooms, not basements unless there's media rooms and, and gyms and things like that that you want to highlight. Sure, perhaps, but just the average family home, you don't really need to be throwing yeah. that money at rooms that may not swing it. Well, and the others, and if they're impressed with the main floor and whatnot, the others are just bonuses. Exactly. So it'll impress them even more. Exactly. Huh. The bathrooms, I actually, I've noticed that now they have heated floors and it's actually pretty cool, some of the bathrooms that I've seen. I went into one home about two years ago. It was a brand new build out in Cochrane. And I was going through this show home and I swear, I fell in love with this home purely based on the bathroom. <laughs> it, it was almost divided in two. There was a men's side and a men's sink and, and oh, wow. a men's closet. And then on the other side of a, of a partial wall, there was the ladies' side and a ladies' closet. And I thought, wow, they've really That's thought awesome. this through yeah. with the heated floors and the heated towel rails. And Oh, even the towel rails. I've never seen that before. Yeah, you, you just didn't want to leave that room because it was so beautiful, right yeah. down to a chandelier in the master, oh, wow. you know, en suite. <laughs> Tell me about the shows you've been on. That's exciting. I've seen Style in the City. I've heard about it, but I haven't actually heard about how homes and lifestyles and that. So how long have you been doing that? And... Okay. Um, so uh, I, I had done some TV in the UK, but now that I'm into interior design, I'm, I'm doing some different focus types of programs. So Homes and Lifestyles is hosted by Kim Hayden uh, of Kim's Kitchen, as, as many people know her. And it's just a style program focusing on again, just homes and, and just different stylish and glamorous, um, mm -hmm. different businesses and that that are out there in Calgary. And then Style in the City, I've been working as the um, dedicated interior designer and stager awesome. for this current season for all eight episodes with um, the delightful Shiva Jahan Shah. I had met Shiva when she had hired me to stage a home for her that she oh, had wow. built with her husband. And um, we'd never met before, and I staged the home and didn't know about the program. And afterwards, it, in talking, and the house sold very quickly, but just in talking, we found out 
that she had um, known her husband had known my brother for many many years. Oh wow, small yeah. world. Yeah, they worked in the same business industry themselves, um, yeah. doing excavation and all of that. So, <laughs> out of all known, the people, <laughs> she had known my brother for for years, and so. Um, you know, it's it's just been wonderful working with those two ladies. They're both very dynamic, you know, just these wonderful, big, bright, beautiful personalities. And I, I just love being able to, you know, talk about the industry and design, staging. It's all very important to me. They're my passions. <laughs> so how long have you been part of the shows? Um, so I've been working with Shiva since last year okay. on this current season of Style in the City. Uh, there's eight episodes, shows on both global and city. And um, Homes and Lifestyles, I was doing that last year with Kim, and that was airing on CTV. And um, I think that's about to come back on the air again. Oh. So, yeah. So what are you doing right now for Style in the City? Can you share a little bit about the episodes? Okay, well, I've done quite a few different things this year. <laughs> we've done Christmas styling. We've mm. done Valentine's. Um, we've featured some staged homes that I've done in the past. And um, what did we just do? We were at Urban Barn this okay. week. We I love that place. <laughs> we filmed at Urban Barn on Wednesday. And um, I just showed off my key picks in their store. I love their brand. So I was styling a living room, a dining area, and an entire bedroom. And uh, did a giveaway for that as well. So, yeah, it's fun. So you're used to being on camera. A little bit. <laughs> a little, just a little bit. <laughs> bit this week. <laughs> so, and also you were actually um, part of Stand Up Publications as well. How That's exciting. Yeah. So <clears throat> they um, got in touch with me and said that they wanted to feature me as one of their top 150 Canadians that mm. stood out for 2017. Yes, I that feature. Yeah. So I was really proud to be, you know, featured with so many amazing people. You know, Martin Parnell, I believe, was in that. And okay. I've known Martin since um, my Cochrane days. And he's a really inspiring individual. He raises a lot of money for kids and mm. opportunities for them to play and, and do sports and things. So it's a great publication. So, yeah, because I'm actually a writer for them as well. And uh, I've known the founder and a couple of the writers and the beauty director. Like, I know a lot of that team. Um, for the last several years, so it's actually pretty interesting what they do. Mm -hmm. It's I like that. Yeah, they they I think they highlight a lot of important different types of mm -hmm. people, um, and what they do, and you know it's it's a really good opportunity for people to sort of learn um, a bit more about entrepreneurship and professionals in the Calgary area. So yeah, I think it's really great. Is that your first uh, your first official publication? In Calgary? in Calgary, yes, and okay. then the the No publication I also did last year. Oh, yes. Yeah, um, the No is a publication that's being launched um, in different markets across North America. Features women who are um, visionaries, uh, mm. trendsetters, mm. or you know, uh, influencers in their fields. So um, I was really proud to have been asked to be the first interior designer and stager to feature oh, wow. when they launched in Calgary. Congratulations. Thank you. And they've just announced they're going to feature me in their best of 2018 as Excellent. well. And do they have a physical publication as well? They do. Yeah, it's, um, it's been rolled out across Chapters and Indigo in Calgary mm -hmm. in uh, 2018 and, and now. But I think it's going to be rolling out to an even wider market for 2019. So you must have the publications in home. <laughs> I, I might have a few. <laughs> Just a few. <laughs> I remember because I was featured in stand-up publications in December mm. and the first thing I did was order it as soon as it came out. Exactly. Because it's exciting, yeah. right? Because it's even part of your expertise, right? Because you can be like, look, this is what I've actually been in. Mm -hmm. Instead of sending people to the website, you can show them your... The, your actual publications so it's exciting yeah well we're we're featuring a lot of office buildings downtown and okay. um you know we're even like at the core and that's a good place to be and just highlighting all these different women and i've met so many inspiring females that have run their own businesses or are starting their own businesses like the prosecco cart she's new and up and coming in calgary and i think she's doing such an amazing job with her small business and I've met chefs and lawyers and just incredible females and, and we're just bonding and it's it's a new female movement out there. Women helping other women rise. And I support We that. rock. Yeah. <laughs> 
So you were actually talking about um, a little bit ago about um, mentoring. So uh, tell me a little bit about that and ways you'd like to give back because we were chatting before the show. Okay, so um, I was asked by certified staging professionals last year if I'd like to be a mentor. Um, they knew that I was doing a lot of different types of media and, and, and things out there and that I had studied design and was passionate about the industry being represented in the right way and that um, people that were interested in getting into staging were getting education, education and, you know, becoming educated about not just... Um, what we were talking about before, placing the cushions, yeah. making the bed. Yeah. It's about running your business properly, being taken seriously as a professional because we work with, you know, realtors, homeowners, home builders, um, just so many different people in real estate. Mm. So, you know, um, they wanted me to help with giving that sort of entrepreneurial advice in running the nitty gritty parts of the business, not just the pretty. That's right. Yeah. The pretty is what you see initially. But you can't make that happen unless you're a good yeah, business owner. Back end and... Yeah. <laughs> so what do you think has uh, worked with you if you could kind of do a takeaway and say this is years, like, you know, into retirement mode. If, what could you say that has helped you in the industry? Getting help is important, not just trying to run your whole entire business by yourself. You have to get support. You have to get help. I'm lucky enough that my family support me. My husband is wonderful. He is come with me so many times, you know, when he's had a day off and he's yeah. hung artwork for me. He's, he's awesome. <laughs> he's, he's helped me with my accounting, you know, he's, um, when we were first starting out or I was first starting out, you know, getting a U-Haul truck and he would help me transport things and oh. go to HomeSense yeah. or wherever and pick different things up and help me bring it in. And that's before I had movers. But yeah. the takeaway is this, ask for help. And, um, you know, give back. If you can mentor somebody else, oh, yes, yeah. always teach, always give back to your community, give back to your industry and, and help another that's, that's out there trying to learn, but trying to learn how to do it right. You know, be an inspiration mm -hmm. for someone else. And that's what I was going to ask you too, because there's a lot of, uh, due to the downturn and whatnot, there's a lot of people in the industry who are getting out of it and that has been there for years. So what advice can you really give them? Just to sort of hold on and, and sort of keep your head above water best that you can. Keep a toe dipped into the water. If you're really frustrated, you don't have a lot of listings, let's say, and you're a realtor, I'd say get out there and just start blogging. Work your social media. Make sure that your face gets kept out mm -hmm. there still. Yes, yeah. Don't just go off into the night and fade away. Even if you're, you're not, you know, busting your hump every single day with a, a whole ton of listings, right um you know have like if if it's like a, a halloween or an easter g do a giveaway or something yeah. like that just keep you know front of face with people and one of the quotes that i actually like is out of sight out of mind because when you're not out there and i've noticed this with even a lot of uh realtors that are no longer in the business they said you know it's slow in say christmas season or holiday season so they go out um and they take a break from their business while the others are still hustling and still kind of, you know, gaining their expertise and gaining the knowledge and, and that type of thing. Mm -hmm. So, and it's, and it's fine to, you know, take a vacation and whatnot, but when, when it's a slow time, I think people should just continuously still be learning. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, it's important to take those breaks too, though. If yeah, you're absolutely. always enslaved absolutely. to your business. You never really get to switch off at the end yeah. of the day, and that's not good for anybody. <laughs> and it's getting back is the trick. <laughs> getting yes. back into the mode. Exactly. So I have a fun question for you. So if you could actually stage or design uh, somewhere, anywhere in the world, where what would it be? Oh, definitely London. I would go back to London in a heartbeat and, and do this. And... Um, they just have such a strong, rich, and vibrant history. You know, when I first arrived in London, I, I lived there 20 years. I used to just marvel walking into some of the department stores, some of them very, very old, mm -hmm. like um, Liberty. Liberty was my first big love, where they would have tapestries hanging and, and silk rugs and fabrics and wallpaper and all kinds of different things, and, and John Lewis as well with all their different offerings that they had, you know, beddings and things. And I just fell in love with the different colors. 
the, the historical colors in paint and, and the historical kinds of wallpapers and finishes and bathrooms, old style bathrooms. Like my first home I bought still had an outhouse <laughs> oh, really? built onto oh, the wow. outside of it. It wow. was um, built in 1898 and it was a wow. long row of different houses and yeah, still had the outhouse on the back. And I love your because and London because it's the it's the Victorian look. Like I love that. And so so you were staging and designing in London, right? No, I did my training. Okay, you did I did training. my training okay. there. Okay. Yeah, and I didn't get into it straight away because okay. just after I graduated and finished my course, I was pregnant. Oh. So literally got my certificate and I was like, Oh hey, surprise. <laughs> <laughs> So I took some time off to focus on my children okay. and it was during that time with my son being very sick and colicky that I started designing these products. Gotcha. I found a, a manufacturer, a factory in Britain because I wanted to support British workers yeah. and, and source locally. All my fabrics were sourced locally. I used to make bath towels that babies couldn't kick off or swaddles that they couldn't mm, kick off either cool. but were still safe yeah. and were organic. I did breastfeeding ponchos. Um, I, I did baby slings that were uh, transport friendly. So for London mums that necessarily didn't drive but were always taking public transport, they had all these extra pockets and different attachments so that they could travel with their baby and still have what they needed to get from A to B. Yeah. And then, yeah, when hmm. the kids got bigger um, and I wasn't so much into the baby, you know, part of life. Yeah. I went back to um, interior design, and here I am. <laughs> <laughs> so you've been, um, so you trained in uh, London, and uh, but you've been doing some research and stuff. So how is it differentiating from our trends and and our the um, the industry in North America? How has it changed, or what's the difference? Um, yeah, because it's it's European culture, right? So what would be the Exactly. Yeah. So they're not afraid of wallpaper there. Oh, I'm and, sure. and color. And that's one thing that I really miss, especially yeah. like I was mentioning about the historical colors. Um, that's always stayed and resonated with me a lot. Uh, I used to like going to art galleries there too for inspiration, just to see how color has mm -hmm. evolved. But not only color, when you would look at oil paintings from like three and four hundred years ago or go into palaces like um, Hampton Court Palace, I lived nearby. Mm -hmm. And just to see like um, the furnishings and, and the detailing and all of that, that vastly influenced me. And here I find it's, everything's very new. There's lots of modernism. Oh, absolutely. Or, or mid-mod, you know, type of looks that have been trending for a while now, or the Higgy look. It's different, it's different. Um, and I like to enmesh both. I'll take yeah. a little bit. I don't. I don't have just one foot in one camp. Yeah. And do you find that when you're staging um, various homes and things, it's all kind of a cookie cutter c creation that people tend to divert to? It it does. It does have that cookie cutter look and feel to it. Sometimes, like you know, you're going to have the Joneses in one mm. house and the Smiths in the <laughs> yeah. next house, and they're all going to have the same kitchen and they're all going to have the same lighting and. The first thing my husband and I do when we buy homes, and we've, we've bought a few, and we've moved a bit. First thing we usually do is start ripping out the builder-grade lighting. Oh, really? And It's you, always the same. It's always the same, and you don't have to spend a ton of money on lighting. Yeah. We have purchased lighting um, even just through online retailers, but we'll get it home, and we'll respray yeah. them. So if we're into, you know, like that nice matte black look, we'll spray all the lighting in that one uniform color. They may not all be the exact same style, but it, they're all the same color. So at least we're marrying that up together, yeah. you know, and it's just keeping it interesting. So you would probably be in cloud nine if all of a sudden the Buckingham Palace calls you to stage, eh? Hey? Well, it's funny because you mentioned Buckingham Palace and when I was working in banking, I worked in Buckingham Palace oh. Road. Okay. And I used to sometimes go and sit and you could eat lunch in yeah. the in the grounds. Wow. And there it was. And I used to sit there and stare at it and think, gosh, I wonder, you know, what's what kind of chairs they're sitting <laughs> on or what kind of dinner service they, you know, they're if having only their I lunch on. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> so we're going to wrap up pretty soon. But in a Power Media TV, we like to ask you, what empowers you? What empowers me? My family do. 
I'm very blessed and I'm very loved and I'm very lucky to have so many amazing people, you know, in my life that I can come home to mm -hmm. or talk to. And that's what empowers me and good friends and, and wonderful women I'm meeting in the industry through networking and that. I, I just, I'm a people person yeah. and I love to see others happy. And if I can make other people happy with my designs or helping them sell their homes more quickly, that makes me feel good. Mm -hmm. That empowers me too. So um, with that, as a, as a woman entrepreneur, a womanpreneur, which is what I like to call it, but um, as a woman entrepreneur, what advice, uh, quick advice that you can give to other females that are wanting to get into the industry? Because there's a lot of um, cliche with that. There's a lot of people that, you know, that want to do something, but they're not sure and women are starting to rise. So what can you, what can you tell them? They are. It's just um, finding your passion. That's the most important thing. You identify the passion and everything else comes after that. Because if you're not passionate about it, you're going to fail. You're going to walk away. And number two would be to get educated on what you're doing. And number three would be to ask for help when and where you yeah. need it. Don't try to, to do, do too yourself. much. You'll burn out. And yep, I've, I've known that in my days. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> you learn. <laughs> exactly, you do. And that's what, that's what I like because, uh, you know, they're considered your struggles, right? So when you, when you, you know, get burned out or whatever, you, you learn that it's life lessons that you can actually portray to others mm -hmm. and help them and mentor them like you had mentioned before. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much. Where can we find you on social media? So on social media, on Instagram, I am at Homes Beautifully. I can also be found on Facebook. Homes Beautifully Interior Design and Home Stage in Calgary. And my website is homesoldbeautifully.com. Home Sold Beautifully, I like that. <laughs> and I'm on house. <laughs> <laughs> um, so just house.com, it's H-O-U-Z-Z? H-O-U-Z-Z, -Z, and it's Homes Beautifully on house in Calgary. Excellent. And do you have any final thoughts for our viewers? Just if you're thinking about getting into business, just don't give up. Focus. Love what you're doing and learn, 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 and never stop learning. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Monique. Thank you so much for having me. This has been wonderful.